Finance Committee meets today to discuss international corporate taxes and the 2017 Trump tax law will be a significant part of this discussion. The lesson of the Trump tax law is that somehow you can spend hundreds of billions of dollars on multinational corporate tax handouts and not produce any lasting boost in jobs and investment. Today's hearing comes days after the release of a jaw-dropping report from the Joint Committee on Tax. That report found that the Trump tax law slashed the average U.S. tax rate paid by the nation's biggest mega corporations by more than half. Add to that data from the Congressional Budget Office, and you will see that corporate tax revenues have fallen through the floor. From 2016 to 2019, they dropped by a third. The fact is, before 2017, the United States already collected relatively little tax from corporations compared to other major economies. Despite this, Donald Trump and Republicans still sent the United States diving headlong into a global race to the bottom on corporate taxes. After all, that race to the bottom is based on the old trickle-down philosophy that's been misleading the American people, blowing budgets, and driving inequality for 50 years. The worst part, it was done in a way that makes America less competitive in tough global markets. Under the Trump tax law, multinational corporations got special new breaks for shipping jobs and profits overseas. There's a specific new tax break for investing in factories outside our country. There are even new barriers to bringing back good paying jobs in research and development or investing in key areas like clean energy. So it's no surprise that the investment boom Republicans talked about turned out to be more of an investment whisper. Manufacturing even went into recession in 2019, months before the pandemic hit. Now, hearing this has got to be a punch in the gut for Americans who live in communities where hulking, shuttered factories sit there as reminders of what prosperity used to look like. Americans have recognized this kind of basic unfairness and imbalance in the Trump approach from the get-go. Colossal benefits for colossal multinationals, but the promises to workers always come up empty. So here's the bottom line from where I sit. As the committee begins today, I reject the proposition that the United States has to participate in a worldwide race to rock bottom on corporate taxes to compete or create good paying jobs. Our country does not have to behave like some kind of minor island off the coast of nowhere, selling zero tax PO boxes to corporate headquarters to crank up a quick buck. Whether it was the result of shoddy legislating or misleading doublespeak, the Trump incentives for shipping jobs overseas are a disaster for working people in Oregon and across the land. It is time the Congress took a fresh approach. In the coming days, joined by Senator Brown of Ohio and Senator Warner of Virginia, I'll be releasing a new framework for international tax that reverses the Trump era handouts to multinationals. Our new framework is based on just a couple of simple propositions. First, multinationals must pay a fair share, just like Americans who work for a living. There were too many corporate loopholes and opportunities for gaming the system before the Trump tax law, and the Trump law just made things worse. Rates are too low, and it's too easy for corporations to skip out on paying a fair share simply by shifting profits and gaming the system. Second, the tax code needs to reward companies that invest and create good paying jobs in the United States and stop rewarding companies that ship jobs in factories overseas. Inequality is getting worse and millions of Americans are hurting and they're out of a job. Provisions of the Trump tax law that shortchange American workers and make us less competitive have got to go. 
As I mentioned, we've got members already hard at work on these issues. I know others have big ideas to bring to this debate. I wanna thank our witnesses. The issue represents a big, difficult challenge, but I think the cross-section of people we have today gives us a chance to start this uh, debate and uh, let's get at it. And my friend and colleague,